Hello and welcome back to another video where today I'm going to show you how to set up a 24-7 uh, torrent box with a headless Raspberry Pi so you don't need a display and a web interface. This is actually really easy to do, it may not seem like it, but it, you can get it done in a day, you can get it done in a couple of hours. The actual work wise is like 20 minutes of work, but there's a lot of waiting. Either way, so let's get started. First thing you're going to need is you're going to need an empty SD card. So if you don't, if your SD card has stuff, you're going to have to right click and format it and just start the format. Really shouldn't take that long. There we go. And the next thing you're going to need is the Raspberry Pi imaging software. So uh, this is the one you can download on the Raspberry Pi website. There'll be a link to download it in the description. What you're going to want to do is you're going to want to select your SD card and make sure it's the right SD card. You're then going to want to choose an OS. So what we're going to do is just choose Raspberry Pi OS 32-bit and then we're going to press con uh, Control shift x which will open up the advanced options. Because we don't have display we need to enable Wi-Fi and an SSH uh, here. So what we're going to do is we're going to enable SSH and we're going to type in our password as root or you can do whatever you want let it root for this, I will change the password once this video is over. And now if you're using Wi-Fi, you can enable a Wi-Fi. I am not using, I am not going to use Wi-Fi, I'm going to use an Ethernet. But what you may want to do is just enable it, and so you can change your Wi-Fi country beforehand if you're using Wi-Fi. I'm using Ethernet, so I'm leaving that unselected. Next thing you can do is just press save, and then you can press right. And press yes. This may take a little bit of time, so we'll just wait. You'll find many pop-ups about the SD card being wiped, that's because it's being reformatted, etc. Just leave it. So I will be back in, I think, about 10 minutes this took last time, so I'll see you in 10 minutes where we will get on with the next part. Okay, so now this is done, we're just going to, you'll get a message like this. We'll press continue, and that is it. The SD card should auto eject, but if it hasn't, you can just check it has. So you can grab that from your SD card reader on your computer and plug this into your Raspberry Pi. Your Raspberry Pi will also have to be plugged into the Ethernet if you didn't select a Wi Fi or connected or just plugged into power if you did select a Wi Fi. Either way, you're all going to need power, you're going to need the SD card. So I'm going to go plug everything in and I will be back. I don't think I have to record you plugging in two wires, so you can work that out. Okay, so I have plugged everything in and got the IP of my Raspberry Pi. This will be different for every device, uh, every Wi-Fi router. My Wi-Fi router has an app to find a list of IPs of all devices connected to it. Whatever, you'll have to check how to do that. So what we're going to do is we're just going to type it in. So we'll just type it in there and then we will press open. You will then get a quick security alert like this, um, just press yes here. It's just basically saying you haven't connected to this device before, so you hit yes and it will accept the connection. Okay, it would have just asked you to sign in, so you type in your username as pi and then your password won't have shown. So there you go, you type that in and now we can start. So there are a lot of commands and I didn't think everyone would get them 100% right the whole time and that's slightly annoying when that happens. So I have made a paste bin with all of the commands in so you can copy and paste them like I will to just go along. But the first one is easy enough, it is just sudo apt updates. There we go and this will take a couple of minutes. The update and then fully upgrade will all take a while, so I will be back once this one has finished updating. Yeah, this didn't take long at all, maybe one, maybe two minutes. Uh, the next command will be the full upgrade and this will take a bit longer. So we'll just paste that in there and let it run. Uh, again, it won't take too long, maybe probably enough time for you to go and grab a cup of coffee. But you're going to have to wait until you get the do you want to continue prompt, press yes, and then it will run. And this will just upgrade, so once it's downloaded all of the updates, the previous command, so this is just applying all of the updates. And this will be applying the updates to everything, including things we're not going to use, but 
it's the easiest way of doing this, so we will just let this run, and I will see you again in another bit. So we've got one last command that will take a while, which is sudo apt install cube, qubit torrent nox. Now the reason we've got the nox part on the end is the nox is the headless version. If we remove that bit, we would need to use a display, which we don't have, we're using a terminal. So because of that we have to add the nox bit, and this will also automatically enable the web interface. So we're going to run that. We're going to give it a second, it will ask us to press yes and confirm, which we will do. And now we will wait, this will be the last long waiting command, and then everything else will get done really quickly. So far it's only been 7 minutes, so not too bad. Okay, hello, welcome back. Time to get into the interesting stuff. Now this has installed, we can open up the app. So basically you'll get us a legal notice saying they don't take responsibility for what we do. This is standard with services, just press Y and enter. And we can see we've been given a password and it has been hosted, so this works. If we want to test it we can open this up, but I'll come back to this later because I know this works. So we can just now get on with setting this to be always on, not just when we run the command. So we'll close this, Control C, and we're going to add a user. So we're going to add the user qubit torrent, and we're going to give it some permissions. Uh, I should probably explain what these permissions do. So the dash a means we are giving it an attribute, so giving it some properties. And the dash g means we are give, grouping these users, so we're giving the BitTorrent uh, moderation permissions grouped with pi, which is our root user. So we're just going to press OK and set them. Now we're going to now set a system job. These are the things that automatically start up. So we're going to open this, and it should be a blank nano file. And we're just going to paste in all of this. So a quick explanation what some of this stuff does. So uh, there shouldn't be too much that we um, need to explain. Uh, the dash D will run our app in daemon mode in the background. And the web port just sets our port. So when we connect to this website, it will be our rug post IP, port 8080. If we want to run this, it's on port 24, 250. You just change the numbers for the ports you want to do. And then when it, and when do we want to restart this service? When this, if there's a problem, a bug, it fails, etc. The rest is just opening up the, opening up the software here. And file permissions. But after that, name description. So there's not really too much that needs to that needs to explain. So we're going to press Control X, Y, and Enter. We're now going to start this service. So we'll enable this. We're now going to find the status of this. And now we will. There we go. And now we're going to enable this so it will stay running. Give this a second. There we go. So now we can. So now everything should be working. We should be able to connect to this. So what we're going to do is, in a new tab, we are going to type in the IP of our Raspberry Pi, which I have forgotten. So I'm just going to find again. That's the same IP that you use to connect to it through the terminal earlier. So it'll be 192.1 Most uh, devices change their IP every 24 hours so you're going to have to check The Raspberry Pi will stay running but you're going to have to check uh, what it is for when you connect to it And then you want to add 8080 to the end of this And now we've got our qubit torrent login screen So the password is admin, the username is admin, admin by default There we go, ah, there, and that will log in. So what we're going to do is, there we go. So there's a few things to work out here. First thing we're going to want to do is we're going to want to probably go down to Tools, Options. And then we're probably going to want to change some of our usernames and passwords. So they're no longer admin admin. I'm going to let you do that. I'll just leave the message for now. 
we can then see some other stuff so do we want to delete the .torrent files after downloaded uh, where do we want to save stuff to to automatically add torrents from a folder which is where do you want these to be where do you want to automatically save stuff from copy torrent files to copy torrent there are loads of settings you can mess around with more authentication things uh, limit speeds uh, non-wising settings, web URL, web settings, and other settings. So my main use for this is if I make an apps or projects and I want to share them, I could just set up torrents. So instead of leaving it running on my computer, I can leave it running on the Pi to continue seeding. And I've actually set up a torrent file for uh, for people to test it with. So if we go to our downloads, I have set test torrent up, and we are going to upload this one. Give it a second. It may take just a second to download and this will be up for a week if on the discord server for the file for others to test and might be up longer might be up slightly less i'm going to quickly cut to when this starts and, and as you can see it's been added it will start restored this may take a while especially if it's like a not reused torrent so i've just made this file but as you can see it started and this will slowly download you can then use this as a great way of like seeding files and just leaving it running somewhere in the corner. Raspberry Pis don't take up much space. If you like this video, please leave a comment and maybe suggest other Raspberry Pi projects to do. Thank you for watching and have a good day.